Hello Ashlings, welcome back to the Phoenix Nest. I'm your host Zeke the Phoenix and today we're starting a new video series, Theory Crafting on the Class Combos of Ashes. First though, I want to thank all my subscribers for getting me to now over 100 subscribers. I'm so happy you guys support me enough to subscribe and watch my videos and I'm excited for the future. To celebrate, I decided to start up a video series I've wanted to make for a while but have waited for a lull in information so my videos didn't become obsolete too quickly. So here's the first video of the series. Today we're talking about my favorite archetype, the Bard. The Bard is a support class that will be a force multiplier in groups. They will be the ones controlling how the battles will flow in PvP and boosting the power of their raid teams in PvE. In other games, Bards have been known for their buffs. But Intrepid has stated they don't want bards to just be buff bots and want them to have a more active role in combat. An example that was given was a bard doing some sort of acrobatic combat ability where he might flip in the air and slash at his enemies in a flashy way. Then his nearby teammates would become inspired from the bard just doing something cool instead of just standing still and casting the next buff in his rotation. Talking to Steven and Jeff at PAX West, they wouldn't loosen their lips about bards, but what they did tell me is that bards can choose to be more musical or more physically inclined entertainer style bards, based on their class combo and builds. Bard is the class I'm most excited for as I've always been a fan of support characters, and I expect Ashes bards will be a lot more similar to D&D style bards or EverQuest style. And since Jeffrey Bard himself worked on EverQuest 2, I expect Bards to be his baby and that he won't let them be a letdown. So next we're going over the 8 class combos available to the Bard primary. I won't be going over the Bard secondary as I'll keep this video series organized around the primary classes. So here's the class combos available to Bard primaries. The fighter combo is Telsword. For Tank, we have the Siren. The Rogue is Trickster. The Ranger combo is Song Warden. For Mage, we have the Magician. The Summoner combo is Song Caller. The Cleric combo is Soul Weaver. And Bard Bard is obviously Minstrel. So let's talk about all of them briefly, and I'll give a few thoughts of things that interest me about each. Tell Sword. This class makes me think of Swashbucklers from EQ2. They were sort of a combat rogue type class, but in Ashes, I think they'll be more of a melee focused buff class, where you'll be buffing people fairly close to you with inspiration style buffs. Buffs from this class would likely be things like melee attack speed buffs, rage or energy gain buffs to help out the fighters, tanks, and rogues in your group, or anyone that doesn't rely on mana. We might see debuffs that can be given to enemies, Things like reduced attack speed or damage done, intimidation that might reduce their chance to parry or dodge, maybe even have some mini bloodlust style skills. Next is the Siren. This class is fairly one of the most interesting and unique classes I've seen on the list. Since we know secondary classes won't be able to pull off what the primary classes can, I'm getting the feeling that tank secondary will add tanking buffs, things like physical damage reduction buffs, threat generation or reduction buffs, things like a misdirect skill might be seen on this class combo. I have a feeling a lot of these class combos will be very situational, but it also gives each of the class combos their moment to shine. Next, we've got the Trickster. This class had me stumped for some time. I've theorycrafted with my guildies, but the main points I'd like to share on what we might see with this class is the name seems to infer will be tricking NPCs in combat in some way. This gives me the impression that this class might have some interesting skills, maybe the ability to trick you into attacking your teammates temporarily, or debuffs like disarms, or maybe some soft CCs. As for buffs, I expect these will have some utility to help the rogues in their group get set up for a gank. Maybe they'll make a good distraction in some way. Maybe they can dress as the tank or healer temporarily in order to confuse people in PvP. Like what if you jump on a healer only to see his costume break and suddenly it's the trickster instead of the cleric. This class and the magician both interest me to see what they're capable of. I'm getting a lot of TF2 spy vibes from their names alone. Now we've got the song warden. This one is interesting to me in that the name and theme remind me a little bit of the wardens in EQ2 
and how they were essentially shamans slash druids. But they also make me think they might be using music in some way to control nature, maybe using a flute to get roots to grab at your foes. I think we'll see abilities that give your range classes some extra nature damage or special ammo, or nature resistances. Maybe they can have arrows you control with your music, like something out of Guardians of the Galaxy with Yondu's Whistle Arrow. Not sure how that would work, but a lot of this is speculation. Anyway, this class is surely one of the more interestingly named classes, which can imply many different gameplay styles. Next is the Magician. As I said before, this and the Trickster intrigue me in that I'm very curious what sort of skills these classes have, judging by their names. This one, I feel, is more akin to the Mesmer from Guild Wars 2, where it might have mirror images that trick the enemy into attacking the mirror version instead of you. As for buffs, I can see this bard combo having buffs that increase spell haste or reducing mana costs, or giving a raid-wide mana regeneration buff. And mind you, remember that they have said they don't want bards to be buff bots, so expect to be doing really cool spells or feats that would narratively make sense to cause the buff they give. Songcaller. This one I get a vision of enchanted instruments floating around for short durations. Maybe this one could have a skill that summons a single violin that buffs melee, a drum that buffs tanks, a flute that buffs healers, and so on, going all the way to having an ability with a longer cooldown, where you summon an entire concert of instruments that buffs the entire raid. Given that we know summoner primaries will have permanent pets, I expect anything with summoner secondary to have temporary pets that won't stick around long after they do their job. Soul Weaver. One of the combos I'm looking at closely as a top candidate for my own gameplay style, this class would be to me a class that could fortify your teammates and have detrimental debuffs to your enemies. Buffs I can see them having would be things like a skill that increases healing taken for X amount of time, or maybe skills specifically aimed at your healers, giving them stronger healing for a short time. I think since we've heard Cleric Secondary will give very limited healing effects, we can infer Soul Weaver may only give small AoE group heal over time effects at most, and I personally think they'll be more focused on boosting healing from actual clerics than adding their own healing to the mix. Lastly, the final class combo on the list is Minstrel. This would be doubling down on being a bard. My thoughts in this class is that it'll be likely a strong generalist class, it would be more of a jack of all trades, master of none type buff class. He'd likely be the class who can buff everyone no matter their class, but only a fraction of what you could do as a combo class buffing the specific classes that benefit from those more focused stat increases. An example would be a minstrel buffing everyone with a flat increase of 15% to attack or spellcasting speed to everyone versus a Tell Sword specifically buffing physical attack speed by 30%, but only to the melee classes nearby him. As I said before, this creates a sort of interesting meta where all classes get their moment to shine depending on what encounters you run into. Like I said, this was a lot of speculation, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun theorycrafting these class combos, and if there's any ideas, your own thoughts, or anything you disagree with, feel free to leave a comment and I'd love to discuss this with you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit my referral link if you're new to Ashes of Creation. Thank you all once again for getting my channel to over 100 subs. I'm excited to keep making content for you guys on Ashes of Creation, and my next video will be on the Cleric Archetype. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you when you return to the nest.